This short video is a kind of an adjunct to the June 19th 32 Soft webinar on variance reporting in QAD. In this video, we will review the 16.3.4 work order cost report in detail to ascertain how to identify all of the variance elements that we discussed in the webinar. Then, we will also review a number of valuable reports in the work order report menu, in the advanced repetitive report menu, the shop floor control report menu. These will also help you in the analysis of your variances in your manufacturing operations. The 16.3.4 work or cost report is, in my opinion, one of the most valuable reports for analyzing and understanding variances and processing of work orders in QAD. You have the work order, the work order ID, site, item, due date, sales job status as selections for uh, the options. You can also use a summary output, which just shows you uh, the basic information about the detail, but then you can run the detail report. Uh, and this is my favorite because this is everything you probably ever want to see uh, about a particular work order. When you run the 16.3.4, there are several report elements that assist in the analysis and understanding of the work order under question. On the header information, you see, and you probably should know all of these values from your previous webinars uh, on MRP, work orders, and shop floor control. You have the work order, the work order ID from the work order maintenance, 16.1. You have a batch value in 16.1. You can put in remarks. Uh, I've seen some creative use of the remarks uh, field in QAD. Uh, the item and item number come from your 1.4.1 and 1.4.7. The sales job comes from sales order maintenance, 1.7.1.1 and 16.1. Uh, there's a work order status. There's a supplier that can be uh, designated if it's a subcontract. You can uh, see the quantity ordered, and this comes from uh, 16.1. Uh, quantity completed comes from 16.11. Quantity rejected is uh, recorded in 16.20.1 or 17.1 if you're in SE, or 18.22.13 if you're in uh, advanced repetitive. You have the order date from uh, work order maintenance, the release date from your 16.6 .6 or 16.7, your release date, your due date from MRP, uh, and or 16.1. The 16.3.4, as we go through, we'll discuss each of the various calculations in turn that we covered in our accounting variance webinar on the 19th. So let's take a look at the work order uh, report. This is one of my favorite reports. Again, it details out sections to the left, material, labor, burden, subcontract, work order, uh, subtotals, and balance. And uh, it details out a number of columns that are available for uh, analysis. And we'll go through each one of these count, uh, columns as we uh, proceed. There's first the uh, quantity uh, accumulated quantity, which is the actual quantity issued to the work order. This is uh, determined by component on a component basis. There is the expense cost, cost that is expected to be issued uh, on the work order. Accrued cost, which is the sum of the rate variance and the usage variance. There is the accumulated cost. There is the rate variance, which is the difference between the standard cost uh, at the time of the work order is exploded and the time that the components were actually issued. There is a usage variance. This variance is between what actually got issued and what the work order frozen bill reflected as the quantity per. And then there's an average cost uh, received to finish this column if you're using that average cost uh, functionality. We'll start out first with uh, taking a look at uh, all of the variances we covered in the June webinar. 
<clears throat> and the first is expected material cost. The expected material cost is a cost that they expected to be issued to the work order. In this example, we've got uh, for part number 0405, uh, 100 expected uh, or accumulated times the standard cost of 0.53 cents equals the $53 of expected uh, cost. If we look at the accumulated quantity and the balance, the accumulated quantity is the quantity issued to the work order. The balance is the accumulated cost minus the rate variance posted plus the usage variance posted equals the balance. So if you look at uh, this operation, the accumulated value of op 10 is the rate variance of minus 10 plus the usage variance of 15 equals minus or 5 minus subtracted from 50 gives you a balance of 45 for accrued variance. If we look at the accrued variance, we find that the accrued variance <clears throat> is the rate variance posted plus the usage variance posted. In this particular case, we've got a rate variance posted of minus 5 and a usage variance of 5, which means the accrued variance is, in this case, 0. If we go on to the accumulated material cost, Accumulated quantity times the expected cost. So if we take the accumulated cost of our uh, 04 part, you can see that the expected cost is, or the accumulated cost is going to be uh, $53. You can find this information in, or the standard cost in 1.4.9 or 1.4.18 for uh, item site records. The rate or the material rate is the difference between the standard cost of the component at the time of issue and the frozen standard cost of the component multiplied by the actual quantity issued. So the rate variance, material rate variance in this particular case, is going to be zero because we've got standard minus 53 times 100 is going to equal that zero. Next, we've got material usage variance. And material usage variance is the difference between the actual quantity used and the quantity that should have been used multiplied by the frozen standard unit cost. If we look at this unit, uh, we can see that we have a, in this particular case, for part number 04, that is 0005, we've got a zero usage variance because we issued what we expected. The expected labor cost comes from the expected uh, labor cost expected to be issued to the work order. So for each operation, we take the setup, setup rate, standard hours, labor rate to get a labor cost per unit. And that then becomes the expected cost for uh, this particular work order, or in our case, of $15 of expected labor for Operation 10. The accumulated labor cost is going to be the actual hours multiplied by the actual uh, pay rate. If you use uh, 14.1321, actual pay rate, pay rate maintenance, uh, the system will use that for its calculation of, in this case, a variance of $15. And again, you can look in 14, 13, 21. Uh, for the actual hours, you're going to look at 16, 13, 13. For that, labor rate variance. Labor rate variance is the difference between the actual employee rate and the standard work center rate. So you take the actual setup rate, standard setup rate, times the actual setup hours plus the actual run rate and the standard run rate times the actual hours. That is going to give you the rate variance. In this case, it's going to be a favorable variance of $5 because we only spent $7.50. We thought we were going to spend 10 but we only uh, had the uh, actual for two. The labor usage variance 
is the difference between the actual hours needed to complete the operation and the standard hour. So in this case, you're going to take the actual set of hours, the standard set of hours times the standard set of rate, the actual run hours times the standard run hours, or minus the standard run hours times the standard labor rate, and that's going to give you your uh, labor usage variance. In this case, you're going to see that it's uh, that five dollars. As far as burden is concerned, burden is that burden that is expected to be issued to the work order. So for each operation, you add together all of these uh, burden values. Uh, in this particular case, that's going to add up to uh, forty-five dollars of expected cost for uh, burden. You're then going to look at accumulated burden cost. This is the actual burden that is issued to the uh, work order. And this is for all of these elements of burden. Add those up, and you're going to come up with the accumulated burden cost. In this case, it's $50 and uh, of accumulated uh, burden. The burden rate variance is going to be the difference between the actual pay rate and the work center pay rate multiplied by the actual hours uh, worked and the labor percentage so if you look at the rate variance you can see here that i've got a ten dollar uh rate variance posted for this particular work center you can find that again in the actual pay rate maintenance work center rates and uh work order routings the burden usage variance is the difference between the actual hours needed to complete the operation and the standard hours multiplied by the work center rate. Again, we're going to take those values to calculate the usage variance. In this case, we've got $15 worth of uh, burden usage variance. Next, we've got subcontract. If we remember from the subcontract flow, that we looked at in the June 19th webinar. Uh, we saw that uh, the expected value for that labor cost is going to be the quantity completed uh, multiplied by the standard cost per item that we've defined in 14.13.1. So here we've got uh, 100 units times 10 cents. That's the $10 that is expensive at operation 20. And again, you can find that in your 1413.1, that uh, standard subcontract uh, cost per unit. The subcontract rate is the difference between the actual subcontract rate and the standard subcontract rate, the routing. If we take the subcontract PO unit rate and uh, subtract the subcontract uh, frozen bomb rate times the quantity received, we're going to find our subcontract rate variance. So in this case, we've got uh, $15 of rate variance uh, recognized. Then we look at the standard cost received. So once we receive the standard cost, this is the quantity completed times the standard unit cost of the parent. In this particular case, we've got uh, 100 units being received at 96 cents for $96. Of value going into inventory. The scrapped quantity is the scrap value or the cost of rejects that ends up reported as scrap in the 1611 work order receipt. Then we've got method variance and method variance is uh, we talked about in the webinar is all of the variance that remains in WIP. Once all of these other variances, rate, material, rate, usage, labor rate, usage, burden rate, usage, subcontractor use, rate, usage, uh, have been accounted for in the close of the work order through 16.21. So there's uh, all sorts of changes and product structures, bookings. So in order to understand what method variance is you number one have to understand what all of the previous variances are and then you can uh, address this uh, issue of material uh, or method variance 
Uh, besides the 16.3.4 work order cost report, there are several other re valuable reports in work order reports menu. So let's take a look at uh, some. There's 16.3.5, the work order cost report. And here uh, you've got uh, values for the work order, material, labor, burden, subcontract, quantity finished, quantity open, average unit cost, uh, completed cost, whip cost. Uh, lots of good information in that 16.3.5. Uh, 16.3.6 is the work order cost report or history report. And uh, I like this one. Uh, a lot because you can see all of the header information that you've got. Then it goes through all the components, uh, both through unit to measure, quantity, quantity issued, unit cost, extended cost. And then finally, for each one of the operations, you can look at the op, the quantity on the operation, standard amount required, standard rate, etc. So the uh, 16.3.6 work order history report is uh, very valuable. The 16.3.28 is basically your 16.3.4 work order cost report, only in an enhanced mode. Then you can go to the advanced repetitive cost reports, and there are also a number of uh, reports that can help you with the cumulative orders that you've created in uh, the uh, advanced repetitive. There's 18.22.4.9, the repetitive operation accounting report. Here you've got the information regarding this specific transaction. And here you can track the actual impact on the uh, detail that's going to go into the general ledger. The 18.22.9.10, uh, cumulative order cost report. This is uh, another very valuable report that gives you all of the header information, and then for each operation, you can see the number of uh, data elements that uh, are available for analysis. In 1822.4 to 13, you've got uh, the WIP valuation report, and here uh, you can see the work order data, and again, the operation data that gives you uh, whether it's a milestone, your queue, your reject, uh, input to the next. Uh, Cost elements, cost extending, etc. There is the 1822.4.14 scrap report, and this scrap report gives you uh, the particular item. It gives you uh, the operation on the work order, scrap quantity, cost elements, uh, la material labor burden subcontract, and then material labor burden subcontract at the lower levels for an item total, a site total, and a cost total depending on your selection criteria. Then in uh, shop floor control, you've got uh, also a number of uh, reports that uh, can very prove very valuable with uh, analyzing. The 16.20.13.9 operation transaction detail. Here you've got uh, for each transaction in the op his, you've got uh, all sorts of information on uh, setup and labor rates, quantities, and times that have been uh, processed against that in addition to the accounting data. In 1620.13.10, operations accounting report, here again you can track the transaction itself in terms of debit and accredited amounts to a specific account and uh, look also at the general ledger detail. The 16.20.13.4 operations by work order report uh, gives you information about a particular work order, all of its operations, quantities completed, rework, scrap, actuals, etc. So I hope this quick review of 16.3.4 work order cost report, along with the work order cost report, the advanced repetitive cost reports and the shop floor control cost reports will help you in your analysis of your manufacturing variances. Or, better yet, don't have any variances. I want to thank you for your attention today. If you've got any questions, please uh, contact Denise at 32Soft 